some flowers. Is there anyone more trapped than an actor in a movie? This was the question which preoccupied Harvey as he tried not to think about the girl he was with, whose name was Melody. In other words, this question concealed another question. Is there anyone more trapped than Harvey? I disagree. You disagree? See, Melody was Harvey's girlfriend. And although Harvey found Melody's name irritating, he never told her this, considering the ditziness of a person's name is not entirely her own fault. And Melody possessed many faults that were her responsibility alone. You're saying you're happy. I am happy. But since you're not acting happy yet, I can't believe you're happy. The worst of which was her habit of not expressing herself as comprehensively as Harvey might have liked. Yeah, I, I suppose. And perhaps Harvey was right. To be only yourself is a terrible problem, but there are generally still escape routes. Whereas the actor in a movie has no exit from the overall picture. What are you doing? Just googling, just doodling. Are we breaking up? Always, this has to be melodrama. Always with you, mon amour and shit. But seriously, is this what's happening? We're, we're still thinking. W wait, wait, um, or maybe just, just two ice creams, eh? What, whatever you want. Let's just do this somewhere else, no? Like, for once, let's maintain our conversations in private. Maybe Harvey had exaggerated the escape routes available in real life. For instance, Harvey had a condition which often embarrassed Melody. He cried easily. Who does this, Melody would say. Everyone in the cinema queue was staring at us. All I did was say, I love you. You were making this impossible. I want a cigarette. You can't smoke in here. Let's just go somewhere else. It's just not working anymore. Perhaps there is, in fact, no difference between the actor in the movie and the person in real life. Or if there is a difference, it's much less than anyone thinks. What? You have so much hair. You just noticed? No, it's just... I realize how heavy the hair must be in your head. You have totally different meanings of the word hair. were only to be envied. Not for the celebrity, but for the freedom from emotion, to be someone whose pain was unreal. In this way, she tried not to think about her imminent meeting with Harvey. See, some days earlier, Harvey and she had broken up. But now, upsettingly, she needed to see him again. A meeting was unavoidable. What is that? Svelte neon hard. That's just two adjectives. It's still a name. It's been a while. It's been three days. And that's not a while. There's this thing. Cha cha. I think I know it. Really? I have it too. That is impossible. No, but I, I, I Harvey. do. Never have we known of a man who has managed to get pregnant. Let's not cry, yeah? Well, why should I be crying? Because, also, I don't know if it's yours. But why not? Would you like the hand massage with that too? I should. For the total fit, I think so. Is an actor really so different to Melody? True, the sadness in her soul was inescapable. And everywhere visible, it was like Melody would want to say she had become some kind of saint who suffered in public with weeping wounds, but... What distinguishes such a saint from an actor? They're both just versions of a performance artist. Oh, well, I am... I am... I am way freaking out right now. Babe. You have to do this here. Thank you.
So what do we do now? I don't know what happens now. What was your thing? You said you had a thing? No. No, it's nothing. Nothing? Really? And let's just talk about it another time. Harvey. My penis is in flame. Your penis? Erotically? in the manner of a disease? Because in the end, the person really is you. This is true in a movie, it's also true in real life. Whatever disguise or alibi it's given, the pain everywhere is real. What kind of a person doesn't tell me this? You're cut off from communication. You're the wild man in the woods with a shapka and no phone reception. You said you never wanted to see me again. You tell no one anything. You never told me about your husband. You didn't need to know that. So that if there is an illusion, it's that anyone is ever making something up. Every human's wounds are always visible to everyone. And it might be sad, this fact of life, were it not also universal. To possess an unspoken guilt is a terrible burden. No wonder, then, if each morning Melody woke up beside her husband Aaron with an ardent sense of dread. Apparently people are either happy, frightened, angry, or anxious. Even if, in general, she tried to maintain a shepherdess kind of lightness and abandon. Really? That's what they are. Mm, but surely they're also disappointed, lethargic, desperate, boring. You have a point. I do, right? Definitely have a point. You okay? Yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah, bunny. Bunny? Yeah, you don't like it? Doesn't matter. Bunny? No, I mean... Get it. What's up? You've hidden fugitives out in the motel, and now they've disappeared. Your name is an assumed name, and you once murdered a man in Marfa. You have a secret lover, and you're wondering how to tell me. But of course, while it may be terrible to be the person needing to confess, the worst role in any confession scene is almost definitely the unwilling and benighted confessing. I think he wants you to move forward. What the fuck he wants? Want it, maybe? Fuck this. Could you open the bonnet, please, boss? Yeah, uh, I, uh, I don't know if that's possible. It's just under the wheel. Under the wheel? Steering wheel. No, uh, I, I don't think it's there. We've got leaves in the bonnet, chief. <sighs> just there. Oh, OK. Thank you. You're kidding, right? But maybe let's not have this conversation here, yeah? Oh, so you're the noble person here? Ah, oh, Aaron. Conversation like this. Forward, please. It's like when the customer at some sandwich emporium is eating a pork press sandwich and gradually realizes midway through the bite, the garlic sauce, the onion, the banana pepper, the sliced pork, the Swiss cheese, it's all slithering and sliding. And the entire situation is disintegrating with no remedy in sight, not even the many napkins that the customer's dejected disposal can help. 
But then, what difference is there, really, between this person and the actor in the superhero franchise who's being asked by the maniac director to reshoot yet another overdone fucking scene? And you were gonna tell me this when? I'm telling you now. You're not telling me anything. Of course I was gonna tell you. Oh, yeah? I had to tell you. You didn't have to tell me. And you kept this locked up in your sinister bank vault of secrets. No, babe, I... I had to. You're ill. So this is the nightmarish and total fuck up. This is what you're saying? Um, that we are having a child? It's some of what I'm saying. It's possible. You might want to get tested. What, well, my eyesight? On a whim? A disease? I said we shouldn't talk about this here. It's a pretty wonderful thing that actors do. This total emptying of the self. A movie star, sure, you are the thing that people see. But also, you have the least control over what it is that people see. And to put yourself in such a situation is a pretty noble thing. Maybe even a thing to be praised. Trapped in total pain with no escape. That kind of annihilation is a perilous and beautiful state. And yet, perhaps, folks, you are not so different. Everyone can feel like this every day. You just replace actor with person and studio system with fate.